Let's go to... Good evening, if anybody's there. Hello? I'll be right with you, just getting set up. I don't like that picture, but it is what it is. <laughs> hey, bless two. Miss Kia Parks, how you doing? My niece. Hey, Barb Brownlee, nice to see you. Hey, Miss B. Washington. Hi, Nina. Thank you for being here. Siobhan Jones is in the house. Andrea Lucas is in the house. And I guess some more people will be coming in in a few minutes. It's just 7.03. Hey, Grandma Gross and Kenya Smith. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys very much. Hey, Denise, Miss Pretty Lady. Backyard Garden. Hi, Tiny Text Garden. I've been really watching your videos. You're doing a wonderful job. Okay. You're doing good. It's a pleasure to see you too, Miss Kia. Pleasure to see all of you. So, since I don't have a moderator in right now, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor and hit the like button. That makes us relevant on YouTube. I don't know exactly how it works, but I know the more likes you get, the more your videos can pop up in, uh, in the search engine for people that um, don't know you. Okay? Okay. So, if you hit that like button, I would certainly appreciate it. Okay. Just checking a few things out. Now, you guys know how I do this. I have a topic or several topics that I will bring you guys uh, what I think is good information that will help you in your gardening. And occasionally I talk about um, pressure canning and water bath canning, dehydrating food, as well as blanching and freezing food. And I share sometimes the foods that you don't have to pre-blanch. You can just put them straight in the freezer. And then I always try to give you gardening tips. And this is a very um, special time of the year because everybody is a little anxious. And they have been growing their seeds inside of their homes or their greenhouses. And now it's time to plant out. And I don't want to sound like I'm whining, but we've been having nonstop rain. When I say nonstop, I mean rain almost every day. But. I cannot complain because there are some people that have been in some really, really rough flooding areas. My heart goes out to Peanut Peppers. I've mentioned him several times with you guys. Guys, it was devastating. Part of his porch floated away. Can you imagine all your hard work and to see it underwater? And he's a brave man because in that flood water are snakes and possible uh, reptiles, crocodiles. And I've watched, I think, almost every video that he made. And it just make you stop and thank God for what you have. Yes, we got hit with a big, bad, I call it now the superstorm of 2021 in February when in Garden Zone 8A in Mesquite, Texas, we got down to three degrees and I was out of power for 26 hours, 14 and 12. I'm not counting all the little times it went on and went off teasing us. But we did what we could to survive and 
now I realize that was nothing compared to what peanut peppers and everybody else in those flooding areas are going through. I mean, my heart goes out to him and anybody else. If you see how high his water was in his living area, the yard, the immediate vicinity, he lives out in the country, in the rural but it still doesn't make any difference. When you see that much water, you don't have a heart if you don't stop and pray for him and everybody that was affected by the storm. Now, I'm not here to bring anybody down. I want to lift you up because no longer will I pray for it to stop raining. Oh, you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm praying for sunshine or sunshiny days. And every time the sun comes out in between the rain, I say, thank you, Jesus. Because I think about peanut, and I know it could be worse. But with all that rain comes a lot of complications with your garden. So you just have to keep pouring the water out, doing what you can, and keep it moving. And just thank God that your plants and stuff are just not floating away. Okay? All right. So the topic that I chose came from one of the ladies in my Facebook group. I'm not going to call her name out, but she was telling me that she had rodents in, the, um, in her garden. And it can be devastating when you work all winter long growing your seedlings in the house, germinating it potting up several times, putting an oscillating fan on them, and trying to mimic when Mother Nature so that when they go outside, they can easily acclimate or harden off. And then you put them outside and then some little rats start running around in the yard and start eating your food. So I decided, I gave her some tips um, on my Facebook group, and you guys are welcome to join that. It's the same uh, name as my YouTube channel, Lady Cheryl's Organic Food Forest and Products. And I just ask that you answer three simple questions so that I know that you are there for the right reasons and you're not trying to spam me with uh, uh, quote unquote free offers and how I can take your website further and how I can help you blow up on Instagram. Guys, you wouldn't believe the kind of email that I got. And you guys know that I've been in business for myself for over 40 years. Not just the hair products. I'm not gonna go all into that right now, but I've done a lot of things as well as manage and teach beauty school, okay? So I can recognize a scam artist or a con artist when I see them, because they get real personal with their emails. Cheryl, you look so lovely today. I caught you alive. Did you know that I could da 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 da? I'm telling you all this so that, because I've been encouraging you guys to start your YouTube channel, even if it's just to document your accomplishments, what you have learned, you can leave that legacy with the loved ones in your life. So don't be shy. Go back and look at some of my videos, the earlier days, 2016. They were like a minute long. I deleted all the ones from 2016, I mean 2015. I think I kept everything from 2016 on because my voice was, um, I had some surgeries. I don't want to get into it, but my vocal cords were damaged. So my voice kept going up and down and I couldn't control it. Couldn't mo it was modulated and I couldn't control it. But anyway, I go back every now and then and watch those old videos and I see how far I've come. But even in those early videos, I still was being myself. That is the key. Give them something or a reason to come back. And I try, you know, doing the humor. I try... Uh, I thought I was going to take off with uh, uh, that GoPro 9 camera and I was going to be doing all this zooming in and out. And I ended up selling it for way less than what I paid for it. And I realized that my gift was instructing what I did in one profession I can do in this profession. And I consider gardening a profession. I really do. 
because most of us, we um, supplement our food. I eat the majority of my food comes from my food course. I, I don't buy a lot of groceries. And some of us supplement the, uh, our neighbors or other family members. Uh, I'm going to speak of two people right now, and I always try to promote other uh, YouTube channels. And the one I'm going to talk about first is Ann Dale. I think it's home, Homestead in the Colonies. She's giving out uh, containers of her seedlings so that her loved ones and friends, family, whatever, can have that. And she saw me growing the beans in a basket. And she left me a comment on that video and said, you know, I can do that too. And so I, it touched my heart knowing that I inspired somebody to do something. And all of you all that have um, content on YouTube, you all know I watch. And I get inspiration from you. So when I get that feedback that I inspire you, know that it is reciprocal. You inspire me too. The other gardener I want to uh, mention is Angela's Busy Bees Homestead and Garden. This young lady has her own farmer's market garden. She had been following me for a long time, she told me. And she blessed my heart when she told me that I was her mentor. And this lady sells her homemade bread, her herbs, all of her brassicas. I mean, everything that you'll grow in the wintertime. So please, go check out those channels. These two phenomenal women that I'm shouting out today. Ann Dale, Homestead in the Colonies. And Angela's Busy Bee Garden and Homestead. They will inspire you. Okay? All right. Now... Getting back to my topic, I'm looking at my notes because I, you know, I always research because I don't want to tell you guys anything wrong, but I'm human and I can make mistakes, okay? Charge to my head and not my heart because I do do, I do do, I do research what I intend to talk about and I will challenge all of you to do the same. Don't take what any YouTube content creator tells you as scripture, like you came out the Bible. No, you Google it. And last week, I think it was, I showed you all the books and references that I used. And then I watch YouTubers. And then I made up my own mind insofar as what technique I was going to use. Because one thing may work for you in the climate and the gardening zone that you're in, but it may not work for me. You see, I know I'm gonna have all this rain. I'll give you one example. I don't plant my tomatoes vertical in the ground. You guys that have been with me for a while know that I lay them on the side horizontal, bend lightly, because you can do that when it's a seedling. It'll snap off at the rate or the height and the width my plants are now. But when they're young, you can mold them. So those seedlings are easily or flexible. That's the word I was trying, my senior citizen brain was trying to say. So you could bend them and then you could pile that soil around them. And so instead of the roots going straight down with all the rain that we're getting, they are more closer to the surface because I bent them and they're shooting out closer to the soil. So I don't get as much root rot as I used to. Does that make sense? Just want to make sense. So if you live in a real dry area, the point I'm making is, I don't think you should uh, transplant your tomatoes horizontally like I do. You need to go vertical so they can go down the roots, go down as far as they can and grab that moisture. You see, so it's not one size fit all when it comes to gardening. So if I tell you not to do something I don't know, let's just say fruit trees. And another gardener tell you that you should, it doesn't mean I'm right and they're wrong. It just means we have different ways of doing things. 
when I was instructing beauty college, I would tell the students, if you have, let's say, you need to make uh, a number five red hair color. I have to write it down so I can see it. And you, don't, you, you can't go out and tell your client, I don't, we don't have your formula. No, you got to use your head and you think, okay, we got 4R and we have 6R and if we add that together, that's 10 and divided by 2, bam, you got your 5R. You feel me? So it's more than one way to formulate what your trees need in your growing zone than what somebody else, another YouTuber says. Okay, but now there are some things that are just absolutely wrong. We will not take bleach and disinfect our garden soil. That's just wrong. Okay? So <laughs> think for yourself and Google. Google. Almost everything is out there. I'm not saying it's all right, good information, but there's a lot of good information out there. So now, let's get back to the rodents. And I don't know if I have a moderator in here yet, but I do want you to... Hold your questions. And hi, did I speak to Lorraine T? I don't know if I did. Hold your questions, and then when the time comes, <coughs> excuse me, you can put them in all caps. By the way, my bubbly water today is LaCroix Natural Lime Essence, and it has no sugar, no sodium, and no artificial sweeteners. It's just a sparkling water. And I think I got that one at Whole Foods. I didn't go. I just ordered it online. Okay. Can you guys hear me and see me? <coughs> because. Can you guys hear me or see me? The reason why I'm saying that because my video stalled. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. So, I'm going to shut that down. And then I'm going to click on it again. And we've got a lot of rain going on in the area, so that might be the reason. Okay, I'm back. So Bob Bissell is in the house. Thank you for responding. Bless you, Erica Taylor. Good to see you, Erica. She never hesitates to comment on my videos. Nice, short, sweet answer. You just don't know how much that means. And I know a lot of people are busy and they can't possibly comment on everybody's video. But when you can, it really it motivates us content creators. G Mama Grows is in the house. Hey, Yankee sister. Good to see you. Hey, Myra McCain. <laughs> Peanut Pepper. I was just talking about you. I don't know if you heard me. Lynn Grafina. I think I pronounced your name right. Lynn is in my Facebook group. At home with Cherie. Hello, Miss Cherie. You're doing wonderful work, young lady. Andrea Lucas. Debbie Epps. My expert. A uh, member of my Facebook group. I didn't even ask her, y'all. I just made her one. Because of Lady Sharp. Don't be jealous because people have information. You don't want to hide their talent. A good choir director will recognize the talent in every section that he was alto, soprano, tenor, bass, whatever. He'll recognize, you don't pick just one person to sing all the songs. Mm -mm. Spread it around and highlight everyone. Okay, so, Mary Campbell, I don't know if I spoke to you, but getting back to the rodents. Now, this is what we're going to talk about now. So now, if you got a garden, you're going to get some type of pest. Whether it's squirrels, uh, mice, or field mice, or rats. Uh, raccoons, possum, and some of you are in some areas you live in the rural. I've been, I tell you, I've been in my location for 30 years. I've never seen a rat close up, but I think I saw one because I saw a long skinny tail going up when I had the pallets. I lost my feet again. When I had the pallets. 
So I knew they were there. And last year was the first time that something small ate the tops off of my fall seedlings, my Swiss chard and my beets. So they like that sweet flavor because they crossed over everything else and didn't bother it. Okay. So I had to bring that in the house and start all over. Uh, what else I was going to say? I, I found two mice or rats. My, 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 <laughs> my son-in-law, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of him. I called him. He came in and put gloves on and disposed them for me. But he said two brothers. They just, like, they just laid on my son deck and just died. That was years ago because that was the first. Wow. That was probably about 15 years ago. But I have seen evidence of some type of rodent. And I uh, bought the uh, trap, the squirrelinator or whatever it is, and we couldn't catch anything. My son-in-law would come and set it up, and we couldn't catch anything. But this year, I'm ready. I'm armed. I have the camera in the back. I always had one over my garage, but now I have it right there in the food forest. And in doing my research, I found that the favorite thing that rats and mice like to eat it's fruit. Did y'all know that? And did you know there are tree rats? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know there were tree rats. And they'll make their home up in the trees. Sure will. So I'm going to tell you uh, some of the things that we can do to keep the rodents out of our yard. Okay? I'm still getting the news feed. I'm just not getting the playback. I'm not worried about it. I can see myself here and I can, what I need to see, your names, just like Yankee sister just spoke to container crops, high container crops, I didn't see you in here. So yeah, we start off by making our gardens and food forests not rat friendly. Guys, you remember I took you on the tour of the food forest and I told you an area that I'm going to work on and my deadline is to get it all done by the end of June. It's my sore spot. I got a potting table back there, a lot of pots and things that I don't use. And I know for an old shed, and I know for a fact, after doing all this research, that would be the perfect breeding and hiding place for rats. Because rats and mice are nocturnal and they don't like to come out during the day. However, they have gotten used to humans. Especially in some cities like New York, heavily populated. You've seen videos, rats in the windows of pizza places and that type of thing. But I can honestly say I haven't seen a, a lot of rodents like rats and things like that. I did see a possum. I thought my sons were lying. They came over one day and they said, we, you know, you got a possum in your driveway. I said, are you kidding me? Oh, y'all, that, that wasn't a possum. That was a cat. That Mom, that was a possum. Okay? And about a year later, I was coming out my back door and one was just walking on slow like, hey, turn around, look at me, hey, and didn't even run. I said, so we got a possum in the neighborhood. And I may have told this story before, and I know it's because we have a lot of woody areas in uh, the suburb that I live, and they are cutting down the trees and building homes and offices and businesses, and they are destroying the natural habitat for those creatures to survive. Okay? So I was like totally fiberglass when I saw that rats number one source of food is fruit. They love fruit and berries and nuts. And what do I have laying around in my fruit tree containers and a little pot that I'm not using? The apples and stuff that have fallen off, the plums. Instead of me taking it and putting it in the compost, I just leave it right there. So you know what Bria and Brian and I will be doing I think they got two or three more days of school. They're going to be helping me clean up all of that. All of that, uh, those extra containers, turn them over, upside down, and getting rid of all those apples. And by the way, let me share with you that I'm getting ready to thin all the fruit on my trees because most of them are young. And if you have a young fruit tree that's less than three years old and you got like a cluster of, let's say, six apples at the tip of a branch, 
It's just going to weigh it down and you're going to get six little small apples as opposed to getting maybe two nice sized ones. So I'm going to be removing a whole lot of fruit. And I would, I was thinking, okay, I'll just leave it in the container or on the ground and it will go, uh, decompose and go back into the earth and be nutrition for the tree. But now I know that I don't need to be doing that. So I won't be doing that. Okay. Hello, Kiki Soto. And uh, anybody else that I missed, thank you for being here. So start by making your garden less rat friendly by removing hiding spots, standing water, because they got to drink, and any type of protein substance. Okay? So you want to clear all any type of underlying brush, uh, bitch piles of wood chips. I'm guilty of that. And make sure that you keep, if you have a lawn, I don't have any grass in my backyard. Uh, but if you do, make sure you keep everything mowed down so that you can see. And pull those long, tall weeds, okay? So you don't make a, a hiding place and a breeding place for them. Okay, so basically it's saying here to keep your, uh, your yard as uncluttered as possible. And another thing that you want to make sure that you do is, for those of you like me that have compost bins... Make sure that you're not putting any dairy, any oil, any cooked grains. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this fan off. It's making my allergies act crazy. Uh, you don't put that into the compost. You guys know that, right? No bones, no chicken bones, no none of that. You just want to have greens and browns. In fact, you need to have three parts of brown to every part of a green. For example... If you're going to use leaves, wood chips, shredded paper that doesn't have any color on it, or um, shiny vinyl, old magazines, that type of thing that doesn't have the, uh, the shiny stuff, you, you want to use three parts of brown and one part, let's say, peels. You know, your, even though rats like um, fruit, they don't go in your compost bin and mess around with the peels. Uh, banana peels, uh, I don't know, apples, you feel what I'm saying? And potatoes, that type of thing. In fact, I had some potato peels that had got a few eyes on them, and they sprouted in the compost, like seed potatoes. And I dug them out and put them into a container, and they grew like crazy. It was a real good harvest. Okay, so be careful. But now I try not to put things in the compost that have a lot of seeds in it. Okay, because basically I've grown by seeds for such a long time that I can tell what it is when it first pop up, first germinate and get the first set of true leaves. But back in the day, when I first started composting and stuff started popping up, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was weed or cucumber or squash, you, you know. So I try not to put seeds in there. Now, you can put things like uh, coffee grounds tea bags. Don't forget to take the staple out of the tea bags. Your coffee filter. And by the way, since I said that, rats do not like the smell of coffee. So you can take your used coffee grounds and if you have a lawn, put it all around your garden beds, your back door, so that the um, rats uh, don't come around. Uh, they don't like the smell of it. They re it repels them. Another thing they don't like to smell of is essential peppermint oil. And you can put that into uh, cotton and just put it in your put toothpick and just put it down in your garden bed. But know this, once you keep watering your grass, I mean your garden bed, or if it rains, you are going to dilute the essential oil. So don't get imitation essential oil. If they rest and rodents don't like garlic. That's why I have society garlic all around my garden beds. They don't like onions. You remember that insect repellent that I told you guys that I spray around my garden boxes and my uh, raised garden beds? Rats don't like that either. They don't like, you know, and that, that repellent I made from the uh, garlic that I organically grew the onions that are organically grew, and the red chili peppers that are organically grew. And then I just diced them up and fermented them. Actually, I just, last time I made it, I made I made enough for this year. I think I got about like five gallons out of it. I did the onions and scraps and the garlic scraps 
I fermented them for two weeks, and then I added the red flakes, and I boiled it for about 20 minutes, and then I strained it in a mesh strainer so that the pepper flakes won't uh, clog up my sprayer. And I just spray it all the way around. And you can add a little dish soap, too, if you want to. And I tell everybody, that's the only thing in my garden that is not organic. You can use vegetable Castillo, but it costs a little money. And I use that for my face wash. So I, don't, I just put a little Dawn in there. Okay, now I'm going to share this with you. This is called Repel All. I got to get that lightning just right. And you can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it just has a very uh, nasty smell that animals don't like. But it would not harm your, your cats or your um, dogs, your pets, okay? It won't make them sick. So they won't be eating this because it stinks. But in the box, it'll tell you that it'll last for two months, even if it rains. And it repels armadillos, beavers, birds, crows, chipmunks, deer, groundhog, porcupines, rabbit, raccoons, rats, skunks, Shrews, and I don't know what shrews are. If somebody will type in what a shrew is, I thought it was just a, a ugly some a creature that be in the um, you know the cartoons and squirrels. And this does work, and it does come in a liquid ready to uh, use spray form. But I like the granulars. Also, you can put out Irish springs. You can cut it up. And you can put that inside of a mesh bag if you want to. I don't anymore. I used to do all that. Put it on, I think I told you before, put it on the, uh, with a thumbtack on the fence and all that. I don't do that. I just cut it up and toss it. If you don't want to spend a lot of money with the, the uh, essential oil of peppermint, because this is really expensive, you can just cut up your peppermint. I got a tea garden that the peppermint just took over, right? So every time I go in there and trim all that up, I just take that mint and I put it all around the back of my rain catchment system on both sides of the house to keep things away from me because I have a fear of mice. Okay? All right. Let's see. Now, you also can put your banana peels and your eggshells in your compost. But, and I'm relating this I'm bringing this in. I know, I know I'm talking about rodents, but a lot of people put the wrong stuff in the compost. The oil, the dairy, you feel me? The meat, the bones, leave all that out because you don't want rodents trying to get that. And another thing is they will lick and nibble all on the eggshells. So I recommend that you do what I do. I rinse my eggshells out and then I nuke them for a minute in the microwave before I pulverize them, okay? All right. So, do we have any questions on composting the wrong materials? I think I've made that very, very clear. Let me see if any questions about the compost, and then I'll move on to some more things about the rodents. Hey, Renee's Garden, good to see you. Shrews are like moles, according to Google. Okay, thank you, Andale, because I know my um, sister has moles in her lawn. Okay? And let me tell you about my sister. <laughs> she re retired a few years ago, and uh, I'm not going to have no garden. I'm not going to have no garden. Last year, I think she had two tomato plants, maybe a pepper plant, basil, a few marigolds. This year, honey child, the girl has five or six tomato plants, the same amount of pepper plants. She's got strawberries. She was looking for a blueberry plant. I'm coaching her all, all along the way, you know, and I'm just really proud of her. And then she texts me and sent me pictures of uh, what she got and what's the best soil. And I convinced her to go organic. And it's a, it's a real good feeling. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Now, I'm going to move on to some three simple things that you can do in your garden to keep the rodents out. And I've already named some of these. Remove your standing water. And because they got to have water to, you know, to, to live. 
uh, dripping pipes. If you got any leaks outside, make sure you get that because they're going to hang around there. And they're going to be around the water source. That's why I told you guys I take all that mint and put it around the rain barrels. Because I, I just knew that instinctually that they're going to try to come in there and get some waters. Um, if you have a bird bath in your vegetable garden, make sure that, you know, you're emptying that water out probably when you go to bed and then put more water in at night because they are nocturnal. But they will come out if they get hungry enough. They will come out during the daytime. Uh, also, the reason why you want to get rid of that uh, standing water is because, you know, it's going to be a breeding place for, for mosquitoes. And you remember last week I told you guys how I used the generic mouthwash and half and half of water. Any generic one or name brand if you want. Half and half, equal portions, and then you add your essential oils. And you can use lavender, you guys know, Centrola, you can use peppermint. There are a whole lot of them that you can look up. Okay? Okay, one more thing about harvest your vegetables so that they don't fall on the ground. I told you about my fruit trees, the fruit dropping off the trees, right? Well, you don't want your berries and things like that to fall down on the ground. Because every night they're going to go down and go around wherever those, that food is on the ground. Even if it's a tomato, a peach, nectarine, whatever it is. Okay? So make sure that you clean up all that area. And then, like I said, you can try those home remedies. Um, I told you about the cotton balls and the uh, peppermint. You want to change those every two to three days. And then alternate with the uh, repellent spray. So don't just put the same thing out every other day because they will become immune to it. And it won't even phase them if they get hungry enough. Okay, I saved another um, website. Uh, that tells you that you could put a fix around. Thank you, whoever that was with the super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. You can put a fence around your garden. I've seen a lot of those on YouTube and in the gardening groups that I'm in on Facebook and Instagram, and they keep them out. Um, same way I do with my insect netting that I put on my beans. And let me just talk a little bit about that. Because the reason why I put the insect netting on is because the moths that lay the eggs for aphids, they don't lay them on big mature leaves. They select tender leaves that the aphids can penetrate faster. So watch when all the rain stops in, in our area. For those of you that are in, from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, start observing your smaller leaves on your fruit trees because you're going to see you're going to have aphids under them. You're going to look at your leaves and it looks like they're shriveling up. And you're like, what the heck? What's going on? And then you lift up and then you see it's aphids. And another indicator other than the, the uh, shrinking leaves is an army of ants. Because the ants like the secretion, the, the honeydew, sugary, sweet substance that they excrete and they, they eat that up. Okay? So, another thing you can do is you can put up out plastic predators like your snakes at your toy stores. And I think I've got maybe 10 owls out there. But the secret to the owls is you must continue to rotate them. Because if you don't, they'll start running around and squirrels will be right there on top of the uh, owls. You've got to rotate them. I set an alarm on my phone to remind me to go out there and turn the owls in the morning. Okay? And, they, and rats are terrified of snakes because snake can uh, swallow a rat whole. So get you some of those rubber snakes. Just don't freak, it, <laughs> freak out and for, do something like I would do. Forget that is a, a rubber snake out there and start screaming. Another thing that they don't like 
blood meal. And I know some of you use that in your gardens, gardens, especially when you're trying to grow root crops like beets and carrots and rutabaga and onions and uh, garlic, okay? Rats don't like the smell of blood meal because they think or sense that it's coming from a predator animal, okay? And good old garlic and hot sauce works too for rats. Now, I had some right here I was going to show you. Oh, where is it? Oh, I see it. Excuse me, I got to reach behind this. Anybody know what that is? My hair, my curly hair. I saved it when I trimmed my hair. And I asked my son who owns a barbershop to please sweep up some of that hair and put it in a bag for me, okay? If you know anybody that owns a barbershop or a beauty salon, human hair would deter mostly any of your small rodents away, unless they're starving. Another thing that would deter them is, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Did I mention coffee? Yeah. Oh, I know what I, know what I was going to say. It had something to do with coffee. Go to Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts. And just be real nice. Hey, I got an organic garden. Um, can I have it? And, and Starbucks just saves it up. They now have a bag. And they put the date on it. Okay? Just make friends with somebody in there. And you'll be surprised. So that'll help keep your rodents away. And it will facilitate in your compost breaking down fast. Because if you put the right combination and layer, uh, like a lasagna, of uh, brown and green materials, once it start breaking down into in the center of that compost, should register 140 degrees. I when I read that like about 10 years ago, I said, sure, yeah, right. But I'm telling y'all, it did. And so I would put compost in my when I had the smaller greenhouse before I started using the uh, electrical uh, uh, heaters. I would always have compost going in my uh, greenhouse, and I would take the top off at night. But it had holes in it, but I would take it off at night so that he can escape. Yes, it slowed down the uh, decomposing of the compost, but it facilitated in keeping my greenhouse warm. Sage is another uh, strong aromatic herb that rodents simply don't like. Now, I think I've got a hornworm. It was raining when I noticed this, so I didn't have time to check it out. But my sage, something took a whole big bite of it. In my Facebook group, I, I posted a video of how a hornworm will, will just and eat up a, a tomato leaf branch so fast overnight. Okay? So I know I got it, but I'm going to wait until it stops raining. I'm probably going to go out there tomorrow and do some investigating around that sage plant up under the leaves. Because it hid and I couldn't get it today. So another one, a herb, oregano. Yep. Cut you some oregano up or buy the oil. Another one is basil. How many of you are growing basil? I got so much basil around in my food forest. Rosemary is another good one. Uh, I didn't bring my lavender out here, but I think I told you already that lavender works. And the final thought on this subject that I'm open the, flo the floor for questions is the main thing is try to get it your uh, garden as neat as you can so that you can see signs of rodents. Okay, I'm smiling because I got a lot of work to do and I can't move as like I used to. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm ready to take them at this time. Who's leaving? Yankee sister leaving? Or Renee leaving? Okay, you got, I understand. You got to go. You got to go. Okay. I'm going back up to see if I have any questions. Hey, um, Susie, I see you in here. 
Chlory K. Kiki, I think I spoke to you. The friend, the Freddy Cat Gardener. Now that's a cute name. I gotta check you out. The Freddy Cat Gardener. Okay, if I miss someone, I think I spoke to Crystal. If I didn't, hi Crystal. Creole Mom's Corner. Very good. Thank you for being here. I don't see a question. Yeah, they don't like blood meal, a uh, Texas tiny gardener or a tiny Texas garden. Okay, the big gas station convenience stores also to get coffee grounds. Thank you, Siobhan. That is wonderful. And somebody left, left the super chat. Thank you for uh, helping me. I appreciate it because I do a lot of uh, giveaways and that'll help me with the postage. So I appreciate that. Uh, Miss Kia Parks, thank you so much. Mary Campbell, here we go. What can you get the hornworms all to mail? Mary, I know it's going to sound weird because I'm, I used to be a glamour girl. I pick them off. I just pick them off. Now, I'm glad you asked because I was going to talk about it. You can also use BT. I can't even pronounce that word good. I'm going to try. Let me see if I can get that. See that right here? And you all can see it's about a third of the bottle. If you can see the shadow, it's got the... I've had this maybe six years. Okay, and it doesn't expire. But this control worms, caterpillars, caterpillars on fruit, vegetables, ornamentals, and shade trees. And it's concentrated. And it actually, the technical word for it is a biological insecticide that is great for organic gardening. Anytime you have in, that O-M-R-I, that lets you know that little symbol right there, that, the, that it's an organic product or considered organic. And where's that name? Bacillus thuringiensis. But people just call it BT. If you hear somebody saying BT, this is what they're talking about. Okay, so I pick them off. And, and by the way, I do have, and it'll be coming up in the video, another way to get it. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to tell you why I don't say it. Because every time I mention what I'm getting ready to do in a video, somebody else does what I said I'm going to do. Okay, but I'm going to go back. I saw a nice question. It was all caps. Okay, guys, we have we have a, a cheese sandwich in the business in the building. A cheese sandwich is somebody that comes in the uh, chat and tries to disrupt us or your train of thought by calling me names or whatever. But um, it doesn't bother me. We just put put them in time out uh, or get them out of here. And uh, the next question, I think it is, I have Ann from Andale. It says, I have, um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to take care of the cheese sandwich. They, you know, they're in the basement and they've got some brown paper bag and they got two pieces of bread, some cheese, and they don't have to pay any rent because they live in their mom's basement and they iron in the, the cheese sandwich, so I call it a cheese sandwich. People get a lot of, um, um, get, get, get a lot of, I don't want to say balls, but I, I already said it. So, uh, when they're hiding behind the screen. Okay. But Ann, Ann Dale has, um, powdery mildew on her cucumbers. Um, and Dale, I know about all the remedies, you know, the half milk and water, uh, baking soda and water, small portion of peroxide and water. But the kind of strand that I have, it doesn't work. I use Serenade from, I get it off of Amazon, but 
I remember Deborah Epps, I don't know if she's still in here. She found it at a nursery. So you can call around. It's called Serenade, just like you serenade somebody. And it really works. It knocks it off fast. And it doesn't burn your plants. Okay? And I do a preventative spray, uh, uh, and Dale, but I don't start until after the rainy season. Okay? And I, I share that in one of my videos. Okay, here's a good one for Rosa Jackson. Hello, all. How do I keep cats out of my raised beds? Plastic forks. Put the end, I say, here's the fork, the teeth in the fork. Put the long, skinny part down. And when they start to have to walk all over those forks, They'll, they'll stay out of it. Or, you know, you could put a little small fence around it. But the forks will work. Okay. What is the best thing to use for spider mites? Spider mites is some, it's really tricky. You see those little squiggly lines in your, they would come in my okra and uh, green beans. I remove them. They won't cause any harm to your harvest. Okay? Or you can, because they're microscopic, you can treat your, I'm trying to think, I think I'm saying this right, with oyster shells, uh, crushed, shrimp shells, crushed, um, crab leg shells. It's the same thing that you could do for nematodes, except for bad nematodes. You have good and bad ones. But the, the, the bad nematodes cause uh, knotty root by fungus. And when they try to eat those, and they're microscopic too. And when they try to eat that, it messes with their skeletal system. And also, you can uh, put DE on it, diatomaceous earth, and that would kill their uh, uh, skeletal system. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Hey, best yet. I'm glad you're here, girl, because we got a little, you know, cheese sandwich in here. Okay. Yeah, uh, 2% said diet to make this earth, and she's right. I, I just mentioned that before I even saw that. You know what, Jean Dudley? You know you may be right, and she's asking, aren't they the same as uh, leaf miners? I think I got them. I think I got them twisted. Thank you for putting me on track, Jean. Good sport. Thank you for bringing that out. Because I think the spider mites make the leaves curl like aphids, and you're exactly right. The leaf miners is the ones that put those squiggly lines. But the way you get rid of them is the same way. I think that's why I associated it. Hey, Deborah White, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming to my rescue. Okay, here go Mason, V Mason. Next time put it in all caps, dear. So I, but I saw you when you, the what? I got your question. What can I use on my cabbage leaves because they have holes? Good, B, BT, worms, worms. Anything that's a caterpillar, if you see um, your cabbage, your broccoli, your um, cauliflower, lettuce, anything in, the, in that green area, BT works. And you only need a little. But look up companion planting. Okay, I want you to research that yourself because you'll find that you can plant certain things that will disguise that smell and they won't come around as much. Okay. Okay, Shawana says she typed a question earlier. Please retype it. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, now here's something about the homeworms. Do you think homeworms are what's eating the insides of my peppers? No. I'm not saying they can't. Because they can, but usually in the spring, they get what they need out of the um, leaves. That might be something else. That might be a rodent. 
I'm not for sure. But if I was to guess, that answer would be no. Right now, they like to eat the young tender leaves on plants. Okay? Lady Cheryl. Oh, she said her hair is calling cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Would you believe this is about 50 or 40 years old? Would you believe that, guys? I'm going to stand up. This is my, was my mother's, my late mother. And she just, she was an uh, a artist. So she had all of these little jazzy things with beautiful material that would never go out of style. I was in one of my closets uh, last week and I came across two of them like that. And I said, oh, they're my mama's. And I, and I uh, washed them and hung them in the, um, on the general cycle and hung them up. No, no, um, what do you call it? Wrinkles or nothing. Belong to my mother. Okay. Somebody's talking about the possums. Possums. Okay, I got the question about the fertilizer. I'm going to answer it in a minute. Possums help. They eat snakes, so I can't use them. I don't know what you're talking about using, but you are right. Possums will eat predators. You're, you're absolutely right. But I can't stand to look at them. <laughs> okay, so at the next question, I think, is from Shana Lloyd. And th welcome, Shana. Uh, what organic fertilizer do you use? Shana, I am so blessed because now I'm at the point where I don't have to hardly buy anything. I have a sea of comfrey, and I'm still planting more. I'm going to divide it when it stops raining, and I'm putting it all around all of my fruit trees and all of my fruit trees that are growing in containers. You start them with a small cutting. I purchased three small cuttings about three years ago. That's when I first, that's when I, mm, I, I got to watch what I say. I was using some other type of organic fertilizer and we kept giving my trees blight. So I, st I uh, was doing some research or I might have saw it on YouTube. I don't really remember. But I, oh, I went to et uh, eBay and I found it. And when I tell you that it has multiplied, I have propagated it over and over. My, my uh, grandson, Brian, is eight years old. And I could actually let him dig some up and cut it. I bring out a, a cutting board like you were doing Boy Scouts. And I can, I can turn my back and let him do it now because I've watched him so many times. And that's what I grow because of the fact that the Russian Blocking 14 Comfrey, that's the one, you don't grow it from seeds. It reaches way down in the earth and pull up nutrients that most plants can't get to. There are a few that can, like Moringa, like uh, persimmon trees, but most of the nutrients you they, they, uh, the other trees and plants can't get to, the Russian blocking 14 can. And so I just cut it off, chop it all up, crush it down, jam it, pack it into a five gallon bucket, and just keep adding more. And I mean, I really squash down, okay? And then I fill that bucket up with rainwater, no chemicals. Right now, we'll use tap water when we get the drought series season, July, August. We won't get that much rain, and I let it ferment for at least two weeks. I diluted ten to one on young plants. I diluted five to one on my fruit trees. But if I have a fruit tree that's sick, I'll pull it on straight and then water it. And I don't put it out when it's going to rain. And that just reminds me of something I wanted to say to you guys. Those of you that are growing in containers, you're going to have to feed your plants more. You're going to have to feed them compost, whatever fertilizer you use, because it's constantly being washed out from the rain. 
okay? And another thing I want to say is about the fertilizers. I do use Garden Line because I've had my soil tested. I haven't had it tested in about five or six years, but I, I was low on calcium and that causes blossom in rot on your tomatoes and you'll think you're getting a sunburn on your tomatoes and your peppers. But what it does, what it, what it indicates is you're not getting enough calcium. So I buy organic lime in the green bag. And when it's raining all the time, your soil gets depleted of lime. And because it's being drained, and sometimes when there's so much water, it won't allow the calcium to absorb through the roots, to the branches, to the fruit. Another thing is you have to watch out for this time of year, if you're in an area like where I live, where there's a lot of water, you have to watch out for your tomato splitting. If you see them getting them little lines like they're getting ready to bust open, take them off and have you some good old fried green tomatoes. Or... You can let them write on your kitchen window seal because tomatoes are one of the one, or I should say, few fruits that will not lose its flavor if you harvest it before it's ripe. It can continue to ripen inside and be just as sweet and juicy. Okay? I hope I answered your question. Okay. So that's all I use. I use Comfrey, Garden Line. I make the tea. I do. I use worm castings. I use azomite rock dust, but those are not considered fertilizers. Oh well, worm casting can be considered. Compost can be considered, but it's not something that I go out and buy. The only thing I buy is Garden Line. Now, that's it. That's it. Build up your soil. If you start keep putting those chemical fertilizers in, the miracle Grow and the Super Duper Rupa Grow, yeah, you're going to blow up your plants and they're going to get real big, but your soil is not going to be healthy. Keep composting without stuff that rats like, right? And add compost every season. Now, when I did my emergency garden, when I was growing food, when the beginning of the pandemic to give food away, I ran out of compost because I grew like a lot of food. So I bought black cow and I couldn't hardly get black cow. I had to get something else. And then it finally came in. Okay, Shana, that's the key. My garden started exploding when I started composting. Then it went to another level, to another sphere when I started using that comfrey tea. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to look for the next question. Thank you, Best Yet. Somebody says something about to their late mother, I think. No. No, that's Susie. Susie, I got to barely move this. Too late for my broccoli had to put them up only spindles left. Worms had a field day. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you could have got them a little bit early. And then I'm telling you guys, I go to war with insects. I have five brothers. Two only living now. Four were older than me. They used to run and chase me and my sister with little worms, bugs, anything. So I grew up, ugh. But baby, not anymore. Not when it comes to my food. Now, when it comes to my garden, not when it comes to things that I've grew from seeds, when I had no power and my son was talking about, Mama, you need to get out of there. Come on, we come coming to get you. No, you're not coming to get me. I'm not going to leave my children. Your children? I'm your children. <laughs> talking about family. I was talking about my seedlings. So now I can pick up a one worm. I can pick up a anything. And it doesn't even phase me at all. And when I think about how they used to torture us, uh, I, I feel like they shouldn't have got away with that. Okay, somebody says something must have happened. Thank you. I'm in Frisco, Texas and have tur tuned, tur have turned my backyard into a kitchen garden. That's wonderful. It's a good feeling. I know it is. 
I know it is. I get up and I go outside and I pray. I sit in my uh, garden if it ain't raining. And I walk over to the mulberry tree and I eat me whatever I want in my mulberries. And then I walk over to the strawberries and I get me some strawberries. And then I come in the house after I pray and meditate or whatever. And I say, well, I'm going to eat for breakfast. And then my head goes, you just had all that fruit. <laughs> you could have brought it in the house and had it with your oatmeal. But, you know. It's a beautiful feeling. I'm happy. Can you tell I'm happy? I honestly love what I'm doing. I had worked for so long, two jobs, that when I was getting ready to retire, it was like the Israelites getting to the promised land. That's how I felt. And I bought the top of the line canners, canner. Uh, dehydrator, all kind of little gadgets because I said, I'm going to have my food for us. And I did. Okay, I'm just looking to see if I'm getting that other question of that young lady. That's right. Feed the soil, tiny Texas garden. Hey, Tasha Mack, you're welcome. Every time I see your name with that hat on... I just think about uh, the game. <laughs> Tasha Mack, that lady was a carry character. Hey, Rhonda, thank you so much, Rhonda. Yeah, I love what I do. I really do. Okay, Quinny's Playroom. She had to spend time with her hubby. Glad you're still on. Good evening. Hey, Quinny. Th that's right, girl. Spend time with your husband. If anybody can't understand that, that, that's too bad. They got a problem. Because you can always catch this on the replay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a good question because it's a long one. Something ate. Hey, Angela, I didn't know you were here. Something ate the... You got to get it just right. Something ate the bulb. Oh, of your f giant... Sunflower, what predator is this? Squirrels like sunflowers, for sure. I've seen them in the past online. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that, if that is what ate it, but I bet you it was. I'm willing to bet you. The garden zebra said her garden is her place of peace. Yes, it is. I don't care how tired I am. I, I, I uh, share this, I think it with my Facebook group. It says, I need to clean up. I need to clean up in the house today. I don't feel it, so I guess I'll go outside and start gardening. <laughs> Something like that. That's honestly how I feel sometimes. Okay, Ann Devil says squirrels were in her sunflowers too. Hey, nephew broke farmer, thank you for being here. We've been having a good time. We've been talking about rats and rodents in the garden and what we can do to keep uh, a safe environment, you know, to not encourage them to come and populate. Okay, somebody just spoke to me. Sunday, I think it was Sunday, Black Gardener. I missed it. How, whoever that was, hello, brother, Summer, Sunday something. How do you keep possums out your garden? The repair all. I've never seen a possum in my garden. And when I, my son-in-law put that trap out, he wouldn't go for it if it was a possum. But they were eating my, um, last year they were eating my eggplant and peppers. I have never had anything to just eat in a pepper like that. And my son-in-law think it was a possum. So we, we, I bought that big trap. Trap. You can get this, repel all, and you can see all them little rodents down there. And possum is on the list. They don't like the smell of it. And I didn't talk about killing stuff, but you can put antifreeze and mothballs out. They don't like the smell of mothballs, but if you dilute antifreeze in water, it will kill rodents. I don't, I don't advocate that, but I just try to repel them and catch and release. That's what I honestly try to do. But I never caught anything. I just ran them off. So Creole Mom's Corner, buy that uh, repel all. 
Thank you, Tommy, for putting my uh, webinar up here. And guys, I'm going to tell you, I kept the same special because I had a couple people email me and told me that could I hold it over because they wanted to get it. So I, I left it on for this week. And that is you get the uh, hair milk. You get the hair growth promoter. You get the total body oil. And you get the pain cream. And it's all for only $49.99. I think it's like comes... Totally comes to $60. I'm trying to go to my website. It won't let me. If you go look on my website and you look at uh, specials, specials and gift sets, it's there. Now, that one will not be on long. It'll be on until I sell that out. I made, you know some more sets because people wanted to buy it click on specials and gifts and then just add it to your card it's a $60.96 value for only $49.99 and then i'm gonna put this one on but i didn't put it on uh if you purchase one candle and one total body cream i will send you the hand sanitizer free you don't have to say anything I automatically know. And those have to be done by midnight tonight. Okay? So, it'll count as today. Because it's not on the website. I'm going to repeat it again. One candle. One body cream. And you will get the hand sanitizer. Now, um... I'm going to give uh, five people, you need to get your pencils ready, because I'm not going to do this live. I'm going to do it via email. Tommy, would you put my email address in, please? Hi, Cheryl, do you recommend making and using my own homemade compost? Yes. I have five gallon buckets. I was thinking of doing blah, blah, blah. Yes, I, if you go back and watch the replay, I share with you how to make it. Okay? The neighborhood cats are pooping. Oh, no. You got to cover that up. Uh, cat poop, dog poop will get into your crops and, you know, that's what, that's what they, they have to recall crops and stuff because fecal, uh, did I say that right? Fecal matter gets into the uh, soil. Yeah. You got to get, you got to jump on that right away. Okay. Okay. So don't forget the two specials. The, uh, the big one for $49.99, that'll be on for about two days. But the one with the candle and the shea butter cream, that's going to expire tonight at midnight. Okay, so let me get back to my uh, questions so I can get it. If somebody, okay, here we go. It's five. Okay, wait a minute. Here's somebody wants to know what, something. She says she, a uh, garden quiz, so she wraps her sunflowers up in two. So it looks pretty and keeps the critters out. Well, if they like, that, that may work. And I'm, and I'm not doubting you. And I thank you for your input. But if they anything like the squirrels in Indiana, that two ain't going to keep them out if they want to get in. They cut through my, my uh, brother's uh, wire screen. We sitting up there eating barbecue looking at them. And the, 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 the squirrel just making a hole in the screen. And my brother, he I got to know him. He's a different type. He's a military ex-military. He went and got his pistol. <laughs> that was one woman going to the screen. So here we go. But you can try the tool. It's very inexpensive at Walmart. So thank you, Tommy. She put my email address up there, LadyCherylsNaturalProducts.com. The first person to answer this question, you all got to email me. And I'm going to choose five winners. And the first question is, how do you pre-treat your eggshells before you put them in the compost? What is the ratio between brown and green matter that goes in the compost? And the last question is going to be very easy. Name three things my sister is growing in Indiana. How do you pre-treat your eggshells? Question number one, before putting it in the compost. 
What's the ratio between brown and green matter in the compost? Is question two. And three things my sister is growing. Email me your answers. If they're right, I will email you back and ask you for a mailing address. Okay? Somebody putting it on the on here. You don't have to, you're gonna email me the answers. I can't go with that. I cannot go with answers here because I know mean, you probably seen me do that before because it shows up at different times and it's not fair. So I'll take the first three email uh five emails with the correct answer. Okay? And I'll screenshot it and I'll post it on the, the community board in um YouTube. Thank you, best yet put the first question because you can go back and watch the replay. Fortune Quest Vineyard uh, Ventures. Next time, put your question on compost. It says, I mix two part feces and... I'm not going there. We just talked about that, guys. It's about uh, fecal matter and all that. I'm not going. In, I'm not getting into that. Thank you, Anne. Anne, would you be one of my moderators, please? I'm gonna add you. If you change your mind, I'll take you off. But type something in because I think I just added you. Yeah, you know. But in a way, it's a little bit flattering because I don't enjoy it. But they don't mess with people um, that are not building a, um, a good channel. The devil come and attack you when you... Um, have a good channel and you're really reaching people with your purpose and your mission to help people become better gardeners and a little bit on the side help you get healthy hair and skin so they get envious and they start asking uh, crazy questions that's all that's all and it might be a little kid sometimes just somebody a little kid you know 16 years old 400 pounds mm-hmm that squash bug well bar brownlee I decided that I'm not growing anything that the squash bugs get because I'm too busy. I gave all those seeds away. If I find some more, I'm going to give them away too. Somebody said the squirrels ate the peaches. Yeah, they be climbing in those trees. But I got about 20 peaches on the ground from all the storms and stuff. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get out there with my gloves and I'm going to scoop all that stuff up because... That's the stuff that I was researching about rodents in your yard. Don't leave your apples and falling fruit on the ground. And I've been doing that. I'm guilty of that. So, yeah. Thank you, Best Yet. What is the ratio between brown and green matter for the compost? Very good. And then name me three things my sister is growing. The self percept proclaim I'm not a gardener. Guys, she got a greenhouse and everything. It's a small one, but I am so proud of her. Mm-hmm, I'm getting emails already. I'm not gonna say who, who, who uh, won. Oh, I got another one. <laughs> Well, it's I, I, what did I say? Five people. <gasps> Tommy lost all of her peaches too. Guys, I shouldn't do this, but I counted ten today. I had like twenty-four. And I always say, don't count your chickens before they hatch. But I couldn't help it. <laughs> I still had ten, ten or twelve. I think it was ten apricots and, and twelve peaches. Okay, we got another good answer. Okay. All right, guys. 
So that's yet put all of the questions on. Uh, Tommy put the uh, yes, and Dale, you got your blue blue uh, wrench. Yeah, I, I was very excited. I was very excited because I talk gardening all the time, and she's retired now. And I don't know if I told you that she's a widow too. She and my she her husband she married my husband's cousin, so her name is Moss too. So the stages of grieving and things like that, I was able to you know, help her with that. And so we talk every day. I'll call her and she'll call me several times during the day. What you doing, sister? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Because it was just two girls and five boys my parents had. Okay. So I think I covered everything I want to cover. Cover. I think we had a great life tonight in spite of a couple of cheese sandwiches. Ain't no stopping us. And we're going to attack these rodents, and we're going to be okay. We're going to put some of these practices into um, uh, into our daily uh, taking care of our gardens. And, uh, yeah. Now, next Monday is a holiday. Right? It's Memorial Day, I think. I'm trying to pull up my calendar. Yeah, the 31st is Memorial Day, right, guys? So I'll be coming to you on Tuesday at 7 o'clock Central Time. Okay? I'll be coming to you Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central Time. I've been doing this for a year. I only missed one holiday, and I came on a Tuesday, and I missed one Monday night when I was on vacation. But other than that, I come every two um, Monday to try to give you some good information to help you better gardeners and for me to be a better gardener as well. Because I learn from you. Because somebody corrected me in a very nice way. She didn't say, you don't know what you're talking about. She said, it's, are spider mites the same as leaf miners? And I had got them confused. And I'm, I'm giving you a virtual smooches. Um, young lady that did that. Okay, everybody. You guys know that I love you. And God loves you too. And I'll see you next Tuesday, 7 Central Time. And remember, if you want to be a part of our Facebook community, you you uh welcome to join my group. I don't promote YouTube videos and things like that if you're a content creator on my Facebook channel, but I will do it on YouTube, and I will do it with the YouTube community board, okay? So I want to you know, say that up front, but if you want to be one of the experts to answer questions for me, because my Facebook group people are beautiful, I'll, I'll just drop them a note and say, hey, I got a lot of orders, I got a lot of stuff going on, I won't be able to answer your questions, can you all bear with me or somebody answer your questions? But I try to help people as much as I can. All right? You know, I love you. God loves you, too. Good night, everybody. Thank you to my moderators. Good looking out. I'll have something for you in the mail coming soon. Bye now. It'll want to hang up.